Well, my uh, name is, like I said, Margaret Kinyanjui, Principal College of Human Resource Management, which is a premier training institution whose flagship programs are basically HR, but we also handle other business-related courses. I've uh, been a uh, principal in this college for quite a while now, since uh, its inception uh, as CHRM in 2014. Prior to that, I had worked in IHRM college in various positions. Other than that, uh, I'm a mother <laughs> with four children and married as well. Okay, uh, in my position, I've done various things, uh, but basically I have a good background in HR. I have a degree in business administration, specializing in human resource management. I have a master's uh, in strategic management. I have done postgraduate uh, training in uh, management studies. Other than that, I've done pro postgraduate qualifications in HR. I have a higher diploma in human resource management. And I've also done the CHRP, the Certified Human Resource Management Program. Yeah, I am one person who believes that for me to be able to convince anybody, I need to have experienced it myself. So for example, uh, before I even uh, became principal of this college, I had done the diploma and the higher diploma in human resource management. And so when we started offering the certified human resource management, I was the f among the first people to be back in class to take the program. And, and I find that it's easier when I'm trying to market. Of course, I have a marketing team here in the, in the college, but I have peers also in the human resource management uh, profession. So when I am talking to them, it becomes very easy to convince them to be able to take the program because I've gone through it, I understand it, and I also know the importance of that certification. Basically, I find that now I'm more confident in the fact that now this being a, a regulated profession through the Act, HRMP Act 2012, it gives you confidence in the market or in the industry in HR that uh, you are now certified. As you know, previously we didn't have such a qualification. So there's that confidence, there's acceptability, and of course the recognition. Okay, like I've said before, um, this is a premier college uh, in terms of HR training in this country. In fact, we are known as the only college that has its flagship in one program, and that's human resource management. So we pride ourselves in being at the right place in terms of offering the you know, CHRP and other HR-related programs. Other than that, we are professionals in what we do. We deliver on our promises. We have ensured over time that we have perfected the art of enrollment for students uh, in our processes that we have in the college. And uh, this being a professional certification, we have ensured the faculty that we bring on board are not people just from the academia, but also from the industry. What do I mean? Uh, for us, we want to bring in people who are experts in the field, people who are already practicing HR, to come and bring that you know, experience and expertise in our class so that uh, our students are not only learning the theory uh, you know, uh, in the subject, but also being able to relate um, with the, you know, the, what the interest industry is doing out there. So very important with uh, bringing it on board the, that kind of a blended faculty. And then, of course, we have, uh, we have a very good team, uh, a dedicated and professional administration team who are trained to be able to handle, uh, you know, end-to-end -end, uh, processes in terms of enrolling and taking care of our students. Other than that, we have an award-winning library. Uh, mainly, we actually, we boast of having the best collection of HR books in this country. Even Nairobi University doesn't beat us. Because for us, being a HR college, we have ensured that whatever books there are in the market for HR, we have them here. And why do I say it's award, an award winning? Because we have won two Maktaba awards because of being a specialized university. I mean, a college, that's the direction we want to, to head in us, hence the reference to university. And uh, we have named our library after the founder, executive director of HRM, who are the people who are behind starting the, the institute, the professional body for HR practitioners. Then, of course, we have different attendance uh, modes for our options for our students. 80% uh, of our students are mature students, people who are working, 
who are busy with different schedules. So we have made it possible for them to be able to attend classes by having different options. So we have what we call a sunrise class. People who want to come to class before they go to, you know, to work. Then, of course, we have the full-time one. These are for the young ones, post-secondary, uh, who have the whole day to be able to come here. We have the evening one, which is, of course, the most popular one, the 5.30 to 8 o'clock. We have Saturday options, and you can be able to, you know, blend, you know, can pick a lesson here and a lesson there. So for us, we find that uh, very attractive to the kind of people we, we who are target markets. Okay, then... Uh, what COVID did to us uh, really opened up other opportunities. We were able to put a state of art out there platform, LMS platform, learning management system, which has made it possible now to reach even more people who are not able to come to, for physical classes. We have even had a student from Senegal, imagine that, South Sudan, within the wider East Africa. So that has made it very attractive uh, to our students and made it easier in terms of enrollment. Uh, like I said, CHRP now is a requirement. Mm. Uh, it's a law because uh, this is, uh, you know, domiciled in the HRMP Act of 2012. So really, anybody wanting to train as a HR practitioner in this country must, you know, have this qualification. So that, uh, you know, in itself, when the, the, what do you call it, the advertisement for jobs comes up, there is that requirement. So it's easier for them to get jobs. Other than that, we have a very rich alumni, more than 10,000. Every other HR practitioner has been through this college. So it makes it very easy for us to be able to place our students. We have signed up with some of them uh, to offer internship opportunities for our students who are completing and also job entry level positions. So it makes it very easy for us to be able to place our students. Then we have what we call um, a mentorship and internship uh, program where we make them ready for the job market. We take them through a one-week program where we train them on what to expect as they go out in the, in the market. So it's not just what they learn in class, but also preparing them that they have this, the necessary skills once they go into the offices. Then out of that, we also uh, you know, match them with mentors, right? So that they are also mentored and they are you know, uh, taken, you know, uh, prepared on how to expect as they grow their career. Yeah. So for us, we've been able to, that has actually been a promise, especially to the young ones. Because like I said, most of the others who are coming in are already working in the profession. So they are coming in just to do maybe CHRP, just to you know uh, grow their uh, skills and uh, certifications. Internally, not, not really, because I find that I have a very, the teamwork, within my team, the administration and the faculty is really, really good. Uh, so it's it's been quite, uh, in terms of operations of the college, it hasn't been such a big uh, a challenge as such. For us, or for me as the principal, my issues have actually been external. There are some things you can't control. For example, an examination body will come up with some new regulations, uh, which now dis uh, disrupts or you know brings challenges in how we are implementing the the programs for example look at what happened after covid the 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 school calendar it was all distorted previously you'd find that uh, we had a very good intake in january february with post secondary now because of the changes in the calendar that has been a challenge some external factors um i don't know i should say this because you are caprice of it <laughs> <laughs> okay. What has been going on, which is not a secret in the HR profession, is what is happening with HR and PEP and IHRM. But those are things uh, for us internally, which has not really hindered in the way we've been doing our operations here. So I, I must say, as a principal, uh, my work has been quite, quite. Um, can I say smooth? Mm. Okay, one of the things that we have seen with the new curriculum, we, we think it will be more accepted because some of the controversial, controversial units have been removed. There is one that even when you try to tell people to come, you know, and do, they'll never cause something like office practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of those are out. Then also the fact that some emerging HR areas have been brought on board, the HR audit, the analytics, the metrics. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing, uh, all right. Then the assessment aspect, because previously there was nothing like that. The continuous assessment, um, 
uh, 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 you know, tests that uh, the college needs to do. That was not a requirement before. The good thing is now that is there. And that for us is very good because you, you're able to monitor the, the progress of the students, all right? Then uh, with that internal assessment, it's an institution's role is very clear on what needs to be done. And then uh, for us, uh, we don't know yet, but we are hoping with that internal assessment, it, what it means, the introduction of self-study doesn't come anymore. Because as you know, that was really was not really working, uh, augering very well with the uh, training institution. Because the minute you bring self-study, it means then you don't have students. But when you said now you're going to have internal assessment, it basically means that students have to be in class and they have to go through. Uh, you cannot have internal assessments if you don't have internal students. So for us, we think that's a good thing. Okay. Yeah, so that's, those are some of the things that uh, we are finding it uh, really attractive with the, with the progs. One of the things, because I do a lot of coaching and mentoring with our young students is, Rome wasn't built in one day. It's a process. Even by the time you come here, you went through nursery, you came to primary, then you did secondary, then you went to the university or wherever you are. So there's a process to everything. You need to be patient with the journey and you need to prepare yourself for that journey. Do get all the, the skills that are required, either academic or professional, all right? So that you're prepared in your career journey, all right? Then the other thing is get the right mentors. Get people who, can, who have been through that journey to be able to guide you on what needs to be done. Get a coach, somebody who will get the best out of you so that you understand what the potential that you have so that you can be able to know what you need to bring on board uh, in terms of your career journey. Then, of course, get professional uh, membership. If you are a HR practitioner, get professional membership because it's there that you'll be able to network with people in the same profession and get the right, uh, uh, you know, um, get the right uh, advice. Then continuous professional development. I, I, um, learning does not end with you getting your certification or your degree or your master's you have to continually develop yourself. Uh, go for capacity building uh, training so that you know what is there in the market and also improve your work. Then social skills, that's something I find a lot of our young people don't have. Very, very important. It's good you get your academic, your professional certification, but social skills are very important. How do you communicate, all right? Um, uh, conflict resolution. Active listening, learn how to listen and internalize and speak before, think before you speak, all right? Uh, also, respect, okay? Respect. That's, uh, social skills, very important, all right? Some things which some of our young people really don't take <laughs> seriously, unfortunately. Then emotional intelligence, understanding your emotion and the emotions of people and how to, to how do you, you, you need to listen what is not being said, all right? so that you, it comes now with being tactful and diplomatic in how you do some of the things. Then, like I said, don't be in a hurry to go to the top. Don't compare with other people and say, oh, this one went so. You don't know what they've done. Like, for example, don't say, I want to drive a Mercedes and I've just been employed uh, in January. You don't know how long it took me to get that Mercedes, say, for example. Don't be in a hurry. Take everything, like I said, make sure you go through the right channels. The, the right steps, surround yourself with the right people, all right? Mm -hmm. Then take care of yourself emotionally, physically, and spiritually as well. Physically, a lot of us don't think about it, but if you are physically well, even your mind will be physically fine. So if you're able to do a lot of things. And emotionally, you know what's happening right now. There's a lot of issue with emotional issues, you know, mental health. So be positive, surround yourself with positive people, uh, people who will give out positive vibes and that helps you in whatever it is you're doing to be able to, you know, to, to have a, 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 you know, a, a good outlook to a lot of things. So those are some of the advices I'd like to give.